Hey y'all, Coach and Fire here, guys. Stacy with me. Shalom. And we're looking at a comment related to a recent video that we did. Alright. When where the Rock Ibar and I were talking on the phone mm -hmm. and uh made the comment that it was amazing how the father allowed him to hear the content from our channel and use it in his music without us actually getting to meet. Right. Until today, twenty twenty two. Mm-hmm. Um, and someone asked the question, you know, why did I say that? Why am I saying that we aren't supposed to meet in this in this time? Right. Mm -hmm. And even uh, mentioned that I quoted Esdras or second Esdras. Mm -hmm. So in this video, we're going to go in and we're going to pull out those scriptures. Right. Because I've heard you say that before, that we are um, not going to meet um, our other brothers and sisters. That we are not going to be in one place together. Now, of course, you know, I got that from the scripture somewhere. Right. Well, turns out we I get that from the chapter that deals with the 144,000 or earthly and spiritual Israel. And this is coming out of the Third Testament, right? That's right. Um, it gives us a lot of information related to these guys in the end times. And when you see down there in verse 26, it says that we're not going to ever get to physically meet. Right. Mm -hmm. So if you would read verse 26. Okay. Verse 26. None can discover where that people is, but it shall be everywhere. Its enemies will try to destroy it, but will not be able, for they shall never be gathered physically. Their union, their order, and their harmony shall be spiritual. Yeah. So this is the main place. This is one of the verses. We got a few more. Mm -hmm. um, that we're going to look at about this gathering. But we see here that the gathering will not be physical. Mm -hmm. you know, and based on what we read out of this section, um, our Father in His infinite wisdom decided not to allow us to be gathered in one place because you know they would destroy us. You're saying all of Israel. All of Israel, all of the multitude that no man can number, all of the Father's people, all of His disciples, whoever you want to call these people who are now carrying the message of our father, man, with his sinister intentions, mm -hmm. if he ever knew that we were gathered in one place, well, that place would be annihilated. Right. Mm -hmm. So this doesn't happen now. Yeah. Well, it, I mean, we've seen this happen within history. People right. are gathered together in one spot and, you know, man knows his spot and he comes in and takes him out. Yeah, think about the Holocaust. Right. You know, so we don't have to worry about that in this time mm -hmm. and we're more like the salt of the earth and, you know, salt doesn't come in cubes. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. You have to shake it and sprinkle it, get it up throughout the food that you're trying to preserve um, so it has to be almost evenly spaced. Right. And so that's kind of where we are now, where you have people all over the country, all over the world who are these lights beginning to shine on the rest of humanity. Right. Mm -hmm. But if you would, let's back up to verse 24. Okay. Verse 24. Today I ask you, where is my people? Where is that people who were prudent when faced with trials, strong in battle and steadfast in the struggles? It is dispersed throughout the world. Yet I shall raise my voice and reunite them spiritually. So that they may go before all the peoples. But I tell you that my people is now formed of men of all races. And they shall come to understand the alliance that I expect of all men. So this is how we are to be gathered. Mm -hmm. Right. We're supposed to hear his voice. And we're not talking about something audible. Right. You know, like it was back in the day of Samuel. This voice now is resonating from our within. conscious mm -hmm. from within and this like i said is how it's going to be gathered so this is how we're going to be gathered and so this answers the question why i say that we will never meet mm -hmm. but let's go on to the part of second Ezra that we mentioned and that's coming out of verse 38 of chapter 2 of second Ezra. okay if you would go ahead and read that okay 38 arise up and stand Behold the number of those that be sealed in the feast of the Lord. So this right here is talking about the sealing. Mm -hmm. This is the same sealing that we hear about over there in the book of Revelation. Right. Particularly down in chapter 7, we hear about the sealing of the 144,000. Mm -hmm. And it goes on to mention that multitude that no man can number. Mm -hmm. Can't forget those guys. But one thing that I want to bring out in this verse here, 
in relationship to the timing of all it is, is how it says here that the sealing will take place before the earth is ever hurt or the seas or the trees. Many of these apocalyptical events will take place after the sealing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. With the exception of the day of the Lord that we read about in chapter 6. Okay. We see that it comes first. Where you see right there where it says, matter of fact, go ahead and read verse 12. Verse 12. And I beheld when he had opened the sixth seal, and lo, there was a great earthquake, and the sun became black as sackcloth of hair, and the moon became as blood. Now, because of the third testament, we understand these seals, understanding that we are now in the sixth seal, mm -hmm. right? And so we're waiting for this particular event to take place. Um, but you see how it's talking about the sun and the moon mm -hmm. going dark. And then right there in verse 13, it starts talking about the stars in heaven. Right. If you would read that. And the stars of heaven fell unto the earth, even as a fig tree casts her untimely figs, when she is shaken of a mighty wind. So we have this right here, which we understand to be the day of the Lord. Right. And it comes before the sailing. Mm -hmm. But now we can tie this to Matthew 24. And actually make a connection between this word sealing and gathering. Mm -hmm. When we start to read down in about verse 29. Okay. Matter of fact, if you will, go ahead and read verse 31. Verse 31. And he shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet. And they shall gather together his elect from the four winds. From one end of heaven to the other. So this is we're talking about the scattered people. Right. Will be gathered together. Mm -hmm. Now we haven't gotten into when or how they're going to be gathered. We're going to get into that in a second. But one thing I did want to point out here. As it's making this connection between what we're reading in the book of 2nd Esdras. And what we're reading in the book of Revelation. When you read verse 29. Okay. Verse 29. Immediately after the tribulations of those days shall the sun be darkened and the moon shall not give her light and the stars shall fall from heaven and the powers of the heaven shall be shaken. So this is consistent with what we read over there in Revelation chapter 6 and chapter 7. Mm -hmm. Matter of fact, read verse 30. And then shall appear the sign of the son of man in heaven and then shall the tribes of the earth mourn. And they shall see the son of man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. So this is what we talk about the day of the Lord. Right. Where the sun doesn't give its light and the moon goes dark. Well, we hear about this all over scripture. I mean, this is almost what the entire Bible is about. Either telling us about this day or telling us how to prepare for this day or how we're going to be living after this day. Mm -hmm. Well, you see that this day comes first and then you see down in verse 31 that his people shall be gathered. Right. So now if we want to understand the timing of all of this, then I believe our greatest hint is up there in verse 29. Okay. Where it says immediately after the tribulation of those days. Mm -hmm. So we back up even further in the chapter and we can see what tribulation he's talking about. Mm -hmm. See right there in verse 15 where he's talking about the abomination of desolation mm -hmm. spoken of by Daniel. Mm -hmm. Whoso readeth, let him understand. Well, when you read the book of Daniel. Particularly down in Daniel chapter 12, you not only hear about this abomination of desolation spoken of down there in about verse 11, mm -hmm. um, but it also starts off talking about Michael, who is this archangel being talked about over there in Matthew 24. Right. So we're seeing a connection here. But the important thing about the book of Daniel in relationship to this study is that it's given us the timing of the tribulation of those days. Okay. We've gone in and pulled out the verses that help us to understand this prophecy. And it turns out that it ended on January the 13th of the year 2022. Mm -hmm. This was the end of the tribulation of those days. Okay. It started back there when they took the daily sacrifice from Solomon's temple. Mm -hmm. This, of course, was before they actually burned it all down. And that was the first part of the tribulation um, or the minor tribulation. And then it gets into the greater tribulation that the Messiah was talking about when they came to that same spot and put the abomination of desolation. Right. That's the dome of the rock that they put over top of that foundation stone, mm -hmm. which Solomon's temple was built. Right. They pushed over Solomon's temple and put a cap over the foundation stone with armed guards, not allowing any of the believers in there to even see this, which we know as the most holy place on the earth. Mm -hmm. 
okay. that occurred in 686 back when the Muslims took over Jerusalem and basically uh, made the place desolate. Mm -hmm. All of chased all of the Israelites out, and even to this day, Jerusalem is being trodden down by Gentiles. Right. And that, of course, is supposed to happen until the day of the Lord. Right. But now I understand some people are going to be a little bit scandalized by this, mm -hmm. especially those in the Esau churches mm -hmm. who they're still awaiting for the tribulation. Well, you have to understand that this was Jacob's tribulation. Mm -hmm. They're actually waiting for Esau's tribulation. Right. They're totally two different. Totally events. two different things. Mm -hmm. it, uh, Jacob goes through tribulation for 25, 2700 years, while the Gentiles, their tribulation is going to last no more than seven or 10 years before they're completely annihilated and removed from the earth altogether. Right. So don't be confused when people tell you that we're waiting the tribulation, you're waiting their tribulation while our tribulation, because we are Israel or Jacob, our tribulation ended January the 13th of the year 2022. Right. Well, that's what the Messiah was telling them over there in verse 29 of Matthew 24, that immediately after that tribulation was over, then we shall see the sun darken, the moon shall not give us light. And the powers of the heavens and the earth shall be shaken. Okay, now the Messiah was talking about Israel's tribulation. The Is tribulation right? of those days, right? Right. Mm -hmm. um, it goes into detail, you know, how these false prophets, these false Christs, with a, will arise. Mm -hmm. This is talking about, you know, those who try to say that um, their Messiah did away with the laws. Mm -hmm. But we find out that the Messiah is the law. He was the law made flesh. Well, this is actually going on through what they call the Christian religion uh, since 312 when um, Constantine, having destroyed all of the disciples that were left, took their books, took their calendar and converted our father's sacred texts into their own religion. Right. And of course, you know, they had to insert all of their pagan holidays and all of their pagan rituals in there. Well, you can't mix oil and water and since they rejected parts of the truth um, they basically were taken over by lies mm -hmm. and so that's why you find so much deception in our churches these days right you, you just can't expect you know a person to um, embrace lies and then be able to regurgitate truth anytime they want you're gonna have to make a choice yes mm -hmm. so that brings us back over to second Ezra where he's talking about these gathering at the Feast of the Lord. Right, and this is the scripture that he referred to in the question. Well, yeah, because this is the one we talked about when it talks about us being gathered or sealed at the Lord's Feast. Right. Matter of fact, let me show you another scripture that supports this. This will come out of the Septuagint translation of the book of Jeremiah. Okay. When you drop down to uh, verse 8... Um, matter of fact, go ahead and read what that says. Okay. Behold, I bring them from the north and will gather them from the end of the earth to the feast of the Passover. And the people shall beget a great multitude and they shall return hither. So here it is talking about the multitude that no man can number, which of course would include the 144,000 disciples, the elect, all of these people are included in this. But notice how it's saying that they're going to be gathered at the feast. Right. But it's talking particularly about the Feast of Passover. Mm -hmm. So this is consistent with what the Messiah was saying immediately because Passover or the Feast of Unleavened Bread is the first mandatory feast after Jacob's trouble ended in January. Right. I mean, we do have the Day of Remembrance that comes at the beginning of the first month. We have the post-exilic feast, um, which is in the 12th month, but those aren't considered part of the law. Right. Like we read about in Exodus chapter 23, mm -hmm. but the feast of Passover or unleavened bread, which is all a part of, is a part of the law. Mm -hmm. And that's why it's saying that we will be, or one of the reasons why I'm saying that we're going to be gathered at Passover. Right. I'm mm -hmm. going to give a little bit more detail on why Passover is so important. Yeah. I think one of the things that's significant also when it talks about the great multitude is that it's very difficult, if not impossible, to number um, 
a multitude of people that are not gathered together. But anyway, we want to come over to the epistle of Barnabas to show some importance with Passover okay. and to make it make sense why we will be gathered at Passover okay. opposed to Tabernacles or Pentecost or one of the other feast days. We're going to come all the way down here to chapter 8 where it starts talking about the temple, mm -hmm. the third temple a lot of people refer to it as. Um, a lot of people refer to it as the kingdom of heaven or that rest that Adam was promised back there in the book of Adam and Eve. You see right there in verses 12 and 13 that he's telling us that it will not be a brick and mortar temple. Right. How, you know, they turned that into a vain thing, vanity. You see in verse 14 how it was destroyed. And in 15 it talks about how they will be given up. Down in 16 they start saying, okay, well, will there be a temple at all? Mm-hmm. In verse 17, he starts to explain the temple. Verse 18, he tells him how it's not going to be built with man's hands at all. But then in verse 20, he tells us how the temple will be constructed. Okay. Matter of fact, go ahead and read verse 20. Consider how that the temple of the Lord shall be very gloriously built and by what means that shall be learned. Okay, so this is talking about the third temple. Right. Don't be confused. The same people who have you believing in a false messiah wants you also to believe in a brick and mortar temple yeah i guess they're taking this scripture to say that it's going to be uh magnificently built and um uh, sort of like that one in which solomon built yeah obviously built but now uh, gotta understand solomon's temple was built by angels and other elohim it wasn't built by hands either right um like the second temple was built by zerubbabel and those guys but anyway look at verse 21 Having received remission of our sins and trusting in the name of the Lord, we are become renewed, being again created as it were from the beginning. Wherefore, God truly dwells in our house that is in us. So here it is telling us how the temple will be constructed. Right. Mm -hmm. But yet and still we come in and ignore that and um, we make the scripture say what we want, which is a building. Well, they do. Right. We don't do that. that right. That's what they do. Mm -hmm. Anyway, like we said, that's why they go in the way. But what we do is we look at the scripture and let the scripture define itself. And it's telling us that the third temple, like Peter was saying, will be built out of us who are these lively stones. Mm -hmm. And we see here how the construction process or when the construction process takes place with these stones being gathered together in the temple. And that is the time when we have received the remission of our sins right. and trusting in the name of the Lord. Yes. Okay. Now we could come over to the Shepherd of Hermas and you guys can find links to these books down in the description of this video. We're down here in the third book of the Shepherd of Hermas called Similitudes, where we find out what it means to trust in the name of the Lord. Okay. Um, actually, I was looking at a video by uh, another channel, AOC. He actually talked about his dream uh, on one of his videos today. Mm -hmm. um, I wouldn't advise you guys to go watch or anything. It was, you know, kind of, you know, self praise or whatever. But one of the things that he mentioned in his dream was how, well, first of all, he was told that he was supposed to abide with the Father. Okay. He didn't understand that the. Father meant Sabbath days and feast days. He thought it meant morning, uh, what they call them things. Devotionals. Devotionals, yeah. And so that's what he gathered out of that when he, the Father told him to abide with him. He never thought of that he was saying to keep the feast days. Mm. That's part of that Esau church. But anyway, he went on to talk about how there was a storm coming. I think he described it as a tornado or a hurricane that was coming. And while the tornado or hurricane was coming, he was trying to cast it away using the name of Jesus, he said. Okay. He was saying stuff like, uh, in the name of Jesus, I command you to stop. In the name of Jesus, I command you to do this. And he was confused why the storm kept coming. It reminds me of a dream that I had where I think I tried the same thing, but this is one back, way back in uh, 2012, 2013. Before you knew what the name of the Lord was. 
Yes, and before I knew that the father was a law. Yeah. yeah, and so here AOC has this to learn because he's thinking that simply saying Jesus many times is going to stop these storms and stuff that's coming up on him. And like the scripture says, many people are going to do that. They're going to cry, Jesus, 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 and the storm is going to keep coming. Mm -hmm. What we're really expected to do is call on the name of the Father or the name of the Son of God, which is actually the law. Right. It mm -hmm. is that law that is there to protect us. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. And there is power in the name of Jesus, but it's not going to stop the storm. This storm is still coming. If we want to survive this storm, we're going to have to take on the true name of the Son of God, which is the law. Just like the book of John chapter 1 and verse 1 says... The Messiah is the word and the word was made flesh. It very well should have said that the Messiah is the law and the law was made flesh because the Messiah is and was the walking law. Right. What had happened with me and very briefly is that um, I do believe an entity was visiting me at night um, and this was going on a while and. You know, I did say, start saying Jesus, 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 because that is the only thing I was taught and it's the only thing that I knew from growing up in um, with a Pentecostal background. And to no avail, it didn't do anything. But once I started repeating the very little scripture that I knew, um, the word, it actually um, was removed from me. Yeah, so that's what we're being told. You know, mm -hmm. is to call on the word of the father. Those who depend on the word are the ones who's going to be protected from these storms that's, that are to come. Right. So back over here in the book of the epistle of Barnabas, when he says trusting in the name of the Lord, this is people who are trusting in the scripture. Mm -hmm. You know, not necessarily trusting in words that they're speaking with their mouth in the last minute. To yeah. save them, but actually depending on the word of God. And that should be stressed here. Right. Mm -hmm. But another thing that it's talking about is having received the remission of our sins. Right. Mm -hmm. Because this too, I believe, is the key element to us being gathered into this temple. And when we come to the Bible and look for the words remission and sins in the same verses, we see Matthew chapter 26 verse 28 mm -hmm. which is talking about the blood of the new testament right or the blood of the new covenant matter of fact if you would read back there at verse 27 and he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it to them saying drink ye all of it go ahead for this is my blood of the new testament which is shed for many for the remission of sins so this is how we get the remission of sins is through the blood of the new covenant which we know as what the passover this is the Passover ceremony. This is what the father was doing. He was allowing us a way to get our sins remissed, allowing us to return back to a cleanliness state like we learned over in the epistle of Barnabas, which allows us to enter this third temple. And by remissions of sin, we're talking about forgiveness for not keeping the law. Is that correct? Well, remission means cancellation. So that's exactly what it's talking about. Mm -hmm. The way it works is we get baptized first, which gives us the forgiveness of our sins. Mm -hmm. Everything we've done up until that point goes away um, because we have been born again through the water of baptism. We are a new creature. Right. But we are still yet sinful because we are yet still human. Mm -hmm. And so we tend to break laws, sometimes through ignorance or sometimes through just making mistakes or being forgetful or whatever. We break the law throughout the year. Mm -hmm. And of course, the law is Exodus chapter 20 through chapter 23, those specific rules of the covenant. Once we break those, we are now again under the death penalty or without the protections needed to make it through the tribulation. Right. Like we said, the Messiah is the law made flesh. Well, he is actually that covenant. Mm -hmm. First, he came down and wrote it on some rocks or sto on stone tablets. Mm -hmm. Then he came and made himself flesh and demonstrated it for us. But, you know, that still wasn't yet good enough because we will still tend to break it every once in a while. Mm -hmm. Well, him and his infinite wisdom knew this, gave us the opportunity once a year to take a spiritual bath that returns us to this cleanliness state that we can enter the temple. Right. So this cancels out the comment that you also got where it says that once we are 
um, receive the Holy Spirit that we cannot sin. Yeah, that's that's part of that Esau church doctrine. Right. You know, they somehow believe that they're above sin and they don't have to worry about doing anything. But yet they can't even tell you what the law is. If you ask them what the law is, they won't be able to give you a good answer. None of them will. Well, if they believe, and I don't want to get off the subject, but if they believe that sin is anything that they consider wrong and that sin is not uh, the transgressions of the law, you sort of can't understand why they say that. What I understand is that we are supposed to be living the letter of the law. I mean, that's the purpose of it. They sh should have called it instructions. Mm -hmm. Those are the instructions for surviving the tribulation. Anybody who rejects the instructions for surviving the tribulation or the apocalypse actually doesn't plan on being here. Mm -hmm. I mean, when, you know, that's why they have them, um, I guess, waiting for their supernatural removal from the planet. I just don't believe it's going to be so supernatural. But anybody who plans on being here is actually going to have to get gathered at Passover. We're going to have to get these sins remissed or canceled out. Else we will never enter a state of purity right. that we can now expect the father to dwell in our house. We're just going to be too nasty. Right. And that brings me to the point of why it's the year 2022. Okay. Well, Jacob is now waking up. Mm -hmm. Jacob's trouble is over and Jacob is now waking up, but he's waking up in a dirty state unclean state. unclean he doesn't know when the sabbath days are he doesn't know about the days of remembrance he doesn't know about the feast days or when they are he may some of them have been following the jewish calendar and like the year 2021 they missed the feast days altogether because they was not following the father's celestial calendar mm -hmm. so we're basically unclean the majority of us and that's why, you know, there's so much going on as far as man is concerned. He realized he has just a short time because come Passover, when these people take this spiritual bath, they're actually going to be empowered. So I have a question. What if all of Jacob does not get this information? What if they do not hear that they are yet in an unclean state and at Passover they can be renewed and cleansed? Um, what happens to the people who don't hear this and don't observe Passover? Well, that kind of brings me to something I was thinking about talking about in this video, and that's the spiritual meanings behind a lot of this. Okay. We're, we're told that we have to seek out the spiritual meanings behind many of these end time prophecies, else we're going to be in confusion and disappointment. Mm -hmm. Well, so in doing so, um, looking here, back over here, what we read about in um, Matthew chapter 24, mm -hmm. trying to find the spiritual meanings of the celestial signs. And what I come up with is the stars falling. Right. What you what you're talking when you talk about Jacob who does not keep Passover, mm -hmm. I believe he's going to be a part of the stars that fall from heaven. Okay, what how what does that mean spiritually? Well, let's back up. First of all, you see the sun being darkened, yes, and then it talks about the moon. Mm -hmm. I believe this is talking about the three major religions of the world. You have the sun, which is Christianity. We were talking about that earlier. Mm -hmm. Their Easter holidays, their Christmas holidays are all in worship of the sun. Mm -hmm. That's what Constantine, the founder of the Christian church, was all about, was sun god worship. Right. So when it says that the sun is darkened, thinking only spiritually, it's saying that the light is going to go dim on those religious leaders who teach sun god worship. Mm -hmm. The Christian ministers, the Christian teachers are going to all of a sudden go dim or go dark in their knowledge. Like the scripture says, there's going to be a famine on knowledge. Well, that's because the sun on a Christian religion is going to go dark. Okay. You remember you had to go to church uh, not too many weeks ago. Mm -hmm. And I told you before you got there, either the uh, pastor was going to give you the best sermon you've ever heard in your life. Right. Or you're going to walk out saying that, hey, I could have talked out myself. Right. Which one was it? I could have taught that myself. That's because the light on the Christian church is going dim. Well, the Muslims are this moon religion here. No, it says, shall not give her light. Same deal, it's going dark. Mm -hmm. Thinking spiritually, this moon religion is also going dark. 
Mm -hmm. Right. These are the three major religions, Muslims, Christians and Jewish mm -hmm. or Muslims, Christian and Israel are the three major religions. Well, you have the sun, the Christian religion going dark, the Muslim religion not giving its light. They're not going to have any information to share. They're going to be in this famine, too. Mm -hmm. People going to be hunting down, trying to hear a word from the Lord. Well, they're not going to find it in the Muslim religion either. Well, the third religion, which would be Israel, part of those stars will fall. Okay. These will be those who don't keep Passover. That's why it talks about a third of the stars will fall. Mm -hmm. So you can expect a third of the people in our, I don't want to call it a religion. We don't really have a religion, but a third of the people in our group mm -hmm. are going to fall. And that could possibly be those who don't know um, about the Passover and don't keep it. Yeah, that goes back to the story of the wise virgins. You have ten virgins. Five of them were wise and had oil in their lamps. And five of them were unwise and were told to go get the oil. Well, the oil is the law. Right. And Passover is a part of the law. Um, it's actually unleavened bread and we only call it Passover. But that's part of the three festival days. Uh, unleavened bread, Pentecost, and Tabernacles that are required. Mm -hmm. And so if you're not keeping Passover or unleavened bread, you're actually breaking the law and your star will fall from heaven. Mm -hmm. And the book of Daniel over there, which I'm getting the major hints from right there in verse three is talking about the stars of the firmament. Well, those who are wise, meaning those who keep the law and are willing to teach the law are going to be the stars that shine for forever. Matter of fact, go ahead and read verse three. Okay. This is Daniel 12 and three. And they that be wise shall shine as the brightness of the firmament, and they that turn many to the righteous as the stars forever and ever. So those unwise virgins who are not following the law themselves and maybe even teaching others not to follow the law, their stars are going to fall to the earth. Mm -hmm. And, you know, they're going to be subject to uh, man and what he has going on along with the moon religions and the sun religions. Right. Mm hmm. And jumping back over, looking at uh, Revelation chapter 7 and verse 14, you see it's talking about there how these people, matter of fact, go ahead and read verse 14. And I said unto him, Sir, thou knowest. And he said to me, These are they which came out of the great tribulation and have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. This again is talking about Passover, mm -hmm. but it's talking about, like we see up there in verse 9, that great multitude that no man can number. Right. All of these people are going to go through Passover, making their garments white again, white by the blood of the lamb. Mm -hmm. And these are going to be the people that's going to be regathered under the law mm -hmm. and ready to go on through these tribulations, through these apocalypses and end up in the kingdom of heaven. Right. While those who reject this doctrine, they're actually going off into the spirit world. Mm hmm. And many of them don't plan on being here anyway. So we won't worry about those guys at all. What we need to understand is that we are to be gathered at Passover, particularly in the year 2022. Right. Because we're right here at the end of Jacob's trouble. Yeah. So it's very important that you guys, you know, share this video, especially to those brothers and sisters who um, do not know. Absolutely. Because let me show you one more verse. Before we go, that's down here in chapter 55 of the Third Testament of the Bible. Mm -hmm. Like I said, guys, you can find a link to this um, book in the description. But if you would, read verse 7. Okay. When those chosen by me find themselves reunited around my law, the earth and the stars will be shaken. And in the sky there will be signs because at that instant the voice of the divine spirit, surrounded by the spirits of the just, of the prophets, and the martyrs will judge the spiritual and material realms. So this is important to this understanding. Like we've seen, the day of the Lord is all over this. Mm -hmm. We've seen connections in the book of Revelation, chapter 6 and 7. We've seen connections in the book of Matthew, chapter 24. Mark 13 says the same thing, is that the day of the Lord and these gatherings go hand in hand. Well, we see right here when these people are gathered around the law, mm -hmm. like we said, Passover and unleavened bread is part of the law. Mm -hmm. So when his chosen people 
find themselves gathered back around this law, keeping these feast days on their proper days, on their proper times, along with the Sabbath days and, you know, all of the other things, the other rules of the covenant. Then what does it say? The earth and the stars will be shaken. Right. So this is kind of supports what, you know, people say, you know, that the great awakening or the third temple or the rapture, whatever they want to call it, is actually going to cause the tribulation. Mm -hmm. Well, that's actually consistent with what we read here. Right. So you're right. It's extremely important that we keep up with these times and particularly the feast of Passover. Right. Mm -hmm. And just so you know, it falls on or about Friday, April the 15th is Passover. That's going to be when we have the communion festival that evening friday evening so it actually will fall on the same day as the gregorian this year the reason why they got it right this year is because the high holy day of unleavened bread will fall on the exact day of easter mm. so they made sure that they got it right this year just like last year they made sure we missed it all together right well this year they are letting us know that we have the decision to make like i said you have the Passover communion festival, this would have been the last supper, would take place on their Good Friday. That's mm -hmm. why they call it Good Friday. But anyway, that Friday evening after sunset on April the 15th is when we partake in our bread and our wine mm -hmm. there at our homes. Mm -hmm. Of course, those who have a lamb to slaughter as the day we will slaughter the lamb that evening, Friday evening, um, we'll do all of the cooking. The next day, during the daylight hours of Saturday, right, having it all prepared f for the evening of Saturday, Saturday evening, mm -hmm. will begin the High Holy Day of Unleavened Bread, which will last until the evening of Sunday, mm -hmm. which just so happens to be Easter. So, I hope mm -hmm. you guys caught how important that is. Easter and our High Holy Day of Unleavened Bread fall on the same day. So, while there's... Some of those star people that we talked about earlier will be keeping the Feast of Unleavened Bread. About a third of those will actually be doing nothing or even down there at church doing Easter egg hunts and eating chocolate bunnies and stuff. Well, you know, you keep saying that this is the year of the turn up. And so um, that's not an original thought. I'm you, just hearing it. It's the year of the reset, year of the turn up, the 2022. It's a year of the choice because, you know, you tell someone, hey, you know, this is also Passover. You know, they have the choice if they want to celebrate Easter or if they want 17. to celebrate Passover. Over here in the book of Exodus, down in about verse 15, you see the three mandatory festivals this is the covenant the end of the covenant it starts in chapter 20 with the ten commandments and it ends here at the end of chapter 23 when it starts talking about the covenant angel that's supposed to protect us through the tribulation well you see right there in verse 15 um it starts talking about the three mandatory festivals that it mentions in verse 14. right mm -hmm. um and unleavened bread is one of those you got to think it's odd that when you type in Unleavened Bread 2022, Google tells you April the 22nd of 2022. But we know it happens the day after Passover. So that would be the evening starting on April the 16th. And like I said, it would be the daylight hours of April the 17th. But you can be absolutely sure that it's going to tell us the date of Easter, which is April the 17th. Right. right. So this is very important stuff. Like Stacey said, be sure to share this. You don't want stars falling prematurely. prematurely. Some of these people would like to make the right decision if they knew that this was going on. Mm -hmm. While others are just going to get caught up mm -hmm. in the religions of the day and they're going to find themselves down there at that church being treacherous. Right. Mm -hmm. Well, anyway, we're going to close it out there. If you got anything out of this video, go ahead and hit the like button. If you didn't, go ahead and hit the dislike button. But if you would, leave us a comment either way. And remember to share. Shalom. And may our Father bless you and keep you. May he make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May our Father lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace.